rolling, guys. Off to the first car show, and it looks like rain ahead of me. Doesn't call for rain in the forecast, but I guess I might get rained on. We'll see. I'll post up as soon as I get there. Well, first run out, 20.1 miles, and I'm stuck. Car stalled out, won't start. So my daughter's on her way to come get me. So anyway, I'm gonna sit here in the 100 degree weather and wait for her to get here. And uh, it's only a two mile tow home to the house, so she's gonna pull me with my tow strap. So anyway, there we go. If something can go wrong, it will. Talk to you soon. Well, guys, this is fun. <laughs> My daughter's got me hooked up, and she's she's killing it, towing the first time with her car. A tow strap, uh, strap wrapped around my bumper, and uh, she's dragging me to the house. I think I uh, lost spark. I think maybe the coil took a crap. That's very possible. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll post up later. Thanks. I'll tell you what, for an 18-year-old girl, my daughter is a champ. She came out with no problem. We hooked the car up. She towed me all the way home, two and a half miles. I told her, don't use the brakes. I'll slow you down at stop signs. And it worked out perfect. All right, so what I think is going on, I'm getting fuel. I think either the coil went bad, because I have, I don't know if I have a spark or not. It's not starting. It's cranking, but not starting. So that, I think, is the issue. So we're going to try starting off with a, uh, a coil. And then I had to go down here and put those red pliers on my fuel line, because I got to... A leaky fuel line down there so I don't know if it's the fuel filter or what so I got to uh, I did fill the tank up so that's probably why um, and I did notice coming home there's a lot of noise from the back end like shocks or feels sounds like something's loose like every time I hit a bump maybe I gotta check the shocks and make sure everything I know everything's tight but I mean you can see everything is here it's double lock nutted I'll just check on the bottom make sure there was something funky about those shocks when I put them in, so I don't know if it needs a spacer or something like that. But uh, tomorrow's another day, guys. And uh, maybe I'll update tomorrow. We'll know what I did. Um, what I might do is I might bypass that fuel filter. So I put a fuel filter there and a fuel filter in the back. I just go straight hose. Because maybe that fuel filter is bad. I'm not sure. So it look, doesn't look like it's leaking from the hose or the fitting. It looks like it's leaking from the filter itself. So that's what we're going to do. Anyway, it was an adventure as it lasted. And back to the drawing board. I'll talk to you guys soon. Good morning, everyone. Sunday morning. I've already been sweated through. And it's just uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, so. Uh, I've been out here. Well, actually, let me start from the beginning. Yesterday, I went to a car show. No cars showed up. I don't know what the hell the deal is with people around here in car shows. If, if there's any cloud in the sky, they won't take their car out. Um, but uh, I went down there anyway. It was about, uh, I don't know, 11 miles from my house. Or a little bit more than that. Um, car ran beautiful all the way down nobody showed up there I stuck around for like 10 minutes and nobody came so I uh, turned around came home uh, got up to US 1 made a left turn onto the street that goes down to my house and the car stalled no matter what I did I could not get it started again uh, as you see in the previous clips uh, I tried starting it 
called my daughter. She came. We hooked the car up, and she towed me to the house another two miles. So after, I think it was around 22 miles where uh, the car quit. So I, in in hooking up the the tow strap under the car, I noticed a fuel leak. You know, constant drip. You know, maybe every five seconds is a drip. So I'm like, oh boy, what is this? The hose is loose or something. So get the car home. Uh, my daughter tows me up the driveway. She pulls her car in the spot of the of this car, and um, I put the brake on in the car. And the car I'm leaning on was not in here, so she was able to maneuver her car out around my car. And um, then me and her boyfriend proceeded to push the car up the driveway and into the garage, which was a workout. Um, got it in here and uh, buttoned it all up and said, I'll look at it today. Well, I started smelling gas in the house. Well, that constant drip was like every one second. So now I have a puddle of gas on the floor. Uh, tried tightening the hoses prior to finding the puddle. And I thought that stopped it and it didn't. So I come to find out there's a hole in the fuel tank somewhere up high. Uh, so what I did last night, I said, all right, let me push the car outside so I don't have a fire in the house with gas and explosions and any of that crap. So I backed the car out. Actually, I got in the car to push it with one foot and steer it with the other hand. And I said, you know what, let me try to start it. Turned the key, the car fired right up. So now I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on because apparently I have spark and it's not a coil issue. Um, so I get the car outside and uh, open the gas tank and a big rush of air comes out. So I'm thinking vapor lock. Um, that can stop a car and it will not let it start again and you still get gas back there but the car won't stop because it's vapor lock. Start with because it's vapor lock. So, <clears throat> I left the car outside, dripping on the driveway all night. And it dripped out maybe about a, two gallons of fuel. And it was still a light drip, so I siphoned another gallon out, and it's, the leak stopped. So, I'm three gallons from the top, or, and whatever went out the driveway. Uh, so, I'm thinking vapor lock. But... Whatever it is, I've got to pull the fuel tank now to find out where the leak is. So, in having the car back up on jack stands this morning, which I just got finished doing, and we're about, uh, I don't know, 30 inches up in the air again. You know, we got, you know, everything is done the right way. Uh, you know, I hard-lined everything into the carburetor. Like I said, don't put no rubber fittings back here, no rubber hoses. But uh, I'm still in search for a hard line for here because I have to connect it somewhere. But the, the pipe goes up to the pipe that comes out of the fuel pump, and then there's a hose in between holding them together. So I'm, I'm thinking that's pretty damn safe right there. Um... Got the battery disconnected. Um, I don't know. I hear a noise in the engine. I don't know if it's lifters. I don't know if it's a knock. Uh, I've adjusted the lifters three or four times on here, and it just uh, does not adjust correctly. So, I may be pulling this engine out and rebuilding it. That's where I'm at right now. But I'm thinking the issue I had yesterday was definitely a vapor lock of some sort because the car started right up last night. This morning I pulled it in, it started right up. Um, and that rush of air coming out of the vented fuel cap, you know, if, if the cap is vented, I shouldn't have that problem. But it is an old cap, so I'm thinking that maybe the cap is bad. And if that's the case, if the cap is bad, I mean, it says vented, but, you know, that stuff, that could be clogged up. I don't know. 
that's the first thing I'm going to test today to see if uh, there's an issue with this cap. If there's an issue with the cap, we'll deal with that when the time comes. There's no fuel leaking right now, which is good. So I can get up in there and see if I can find where the leak is. So uh, we're back on jack stands again. And uh, I'm going to make a decision on... I know i got to pull the fuel tank. i got to pull the middle tunnel down again. I need to trace a couple of wires that I found tucked behind some stuff. I want to address the clutch rod because it squeaks every time I push it in and out and it drives me nuts and then I'll determine what I'm going to do with the engine if I'm going to rebuild it or if I'm just going to uh, stop here and uh, run it as it is until I need a new engine, I don't know I've already been online looking at uh, Corvair engines there's one in California for six grand, completely brand new zero miles, all rebuilt every new part in it and then I see them as low as $500 for rebuildable engines. So, you know, this way I can rebuild one while I drive this, and then when that's done, put it in here, and then take that one out and rebuild it, and then have a spare for any stupid things like that. So, as we sit here, you know what I'll be doing today. <laughs> so first, first things first is I'm going to uh, mess with... Yeah, this doesn't sound good. It looks all clinky inside. But I'll check this to see if the vent is working. So, that's what I have. If I have an update today, I will uh, post it. If I don't, I will... Uh, I won't post it. <laughs> and this will be the end of the video. So, Alright, everyone have a great rest of your Sunday. And I'll talk to you on the next one. See ya. Okay, here's where I'm at. Um, got under the car, pulled the main tunnel out um, so I can expose a couple of wires that I have to trace. Um, I cannot get up behind the tank to find where the leak is coming from. It's definitely coming from the back side of the uh, fuel tank. So um, it's going to have to come out. So. Until I get some gas cans to drain the fuel out, it's going to be up on lifts. And that's probably about as much as I can do today. Um, to trace the wires, I need to trace. I need to pull the passenger seat out, tear the carpet up on the one side so I can get under there to check where these wires go to. And uh, what they possibly ran, I think it was maybe for an aftermarket radio or something so if that's the case I may leave them in there because I'm going to be putting a radio in but um, there's another section that has got a switch an on off switch so I don't know if that could have been for a radio also I have to figure those things out but as we sit right now I gotta go find some gas cans uh, I've got two here that's got two gallons so I need to get another ten gallon worth of gas cans. So, that's it. I'll update when I get back on it.